I feel like when we're talking about freedom, when we're talking about anything in that regard, we look at it in such an external sense, as if everything that contains us is something outside of us, when I don't think that's true. I feel like our cage is not so much what contains us, but what we contain within us. It's how much we decide to carry throughout the day and, and throughout our whole lives that really contributes to our weight and contributes to our feeling of captivity. Because I feel like if anything, people feel trapped within themselves. You know, they feel as if, I don't know, their expression is stuck in a very specific way or they only are a certain way and they can't grow out of that or, or this is that and the other to the point where any type of change or any type of realization of their freedom or any type of inkling of, of hope is just, I guess, void of possibility. And I don't say that to, to be cynical or any sense, but I'm just realizing that, you know, we have to readdress the ways of which we hold ourselves captive. You know, I feel like a lot of times it's just about our internal struggles and internal battles that are projected into the external world that make us feel like this thing is, is holding us captive or this thing is holding me, you know, hostage in a sense. Because I feel like it's when we come into the situations that sort of show us our relative captivity in the external sense. Like if I go out and do something, I feel like I can't do it or I feel like this, this is like a barrier to whatever it is I'm trying to achieve. I feel like a lot of times we don't look within so much and we look without. Like we try to just, I guess, overcome the obstacle in, in a very external way without realizing that, you know, the reason that the obstacle is considered an obstacle is because of our mind. It's because of our relative relationship that we have to it and, and how we allow ourselves to be so much within it that we can't take ourselves out of it. And what I realize is, I think it's really just about your present intention and effort towards whatever obstacles come in your path that allow you to sort of open the cage and open the door to your own understanding. Because you know, not all closed doors are locked. Sometimes you have to push them open. And sometimes that pushing isn't necessarily a over exhaustion of your effort. It's just a, a realization that you can. It's a realization that you just have to apply a little bit in order to, to understand that your step is right there. And you know, I say that with a lot of uh, lots of grains of salt, because, of course, there are many things that, uh, I guess, hold us that uh, are very societal. But in terms of those things that are not societal and are inherent to who we are as individuals and as people, I feel like it's important to realize where we're holding ourselves. I feel like everyone has to realize at some point that, you know, there are many things that pull our strings. And I think most of all, we have to realize that we need to pull our own. You know, whether or not you do, whether or not you don't, I feel like it's it's just important to, you know, um, the cage that you have within yourself or whatever you're contending within, I feel like is a lot of times what you express outward. You know, I feel like it's what we carry inward that allows us to express outward sometimes. And a lot of times I feel like it's the negativity that seeps out that makes us feel unbefitting of ourselves, almost as if there are parts of ourselves that I guess we're sort of hiding from or holding within ourselves. And I feel like that's the cage, man, because we feel as if there's parts of ourselves that we have to keep hidden from the world or this, this, that, and the other. Would, and sometimes it's true. Of course, we live in a societal uh, societal place and uh, we have to be social. But I think to that same extent, we have to realize that anything that we're hiding from ourselves is, is seeping through into our action. And it's seeping through in ways that we probably don't know. And that's why I feel like it's important to have some sort of acknowledgement of it before you walk out into the world or before you do anything. And I'm not saying you can't walk out into the world and do that, but I'm saying that I find a lot of peace and a lot of shelter, I guess, in the realization that, you know, uh, I'm subject to change, that I can pretty much improve upon any aspect of myself that I, I feel is necessary. And even if I, I deem a, a part of me as, as bad, I feel like the only reason I can acknowledge it as bad is because I'm referencing it to, to some other grand quality. And I think it's important to learn how to accept yourself and those bad qualities because you can't heal what you don't acknowledge. And I feel like acknowledgement is the first step of healing anything and of changing everything. If you don't listen to the parts of yourself that seek out change, then you, you'll never get to that point. And I forgot what, what I had. I said something the other day when I was in conversation. It was like, oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Uh, our capacity to learn is not dictated by our our effort, but our willingness to listen. And I feel like a lot of times we just have to listen to ourselves in regards to anything. You know, I feel like 
a lot of times we tell ourselves our own answers or we tell ourselves what we need or we tell ourselves what exactly we need to do in a certain situation in order to get out of it. And I think it's important to just sort of listen to your own internal uh, compass at some times. Of course, be more, I don't know what everybody's internal compass is looking like. But in regards to my own, I guess, in regards to anything I know about other people, I feel like it's important to sort of have that foundation within yourself and sort of let yourself go. You know, that cage feeling we feel for the world is really just the cage we put ourselves in. It's about what we carry within ourselves, what type of ideals, what type of mentalities, what type of stuckness we allow to, I guess, percolate through our, through our being. And I think a lot of it is just not being able to, I guess, embrace your own comfort or embrace the comfort of being yourself in a real, in a real sense. Because I feel like the world sort of puts us in a box, but not necessarily because the world does so, because we think that we have to be put in a box to express ourselves in the world. And of course, this isn't necessarily something that's, you know, brought about solely by us. Of course, we're taught that in a very specific way. But I feel like if we ever come to the realization that we're being held or something is holding us back, then it's our responsibility to relinquish that that holding. And I feel like a lot of times we're just holding ourselves back from our own success or holding ourselves back from, I guess, an expansive definition. You know, we feel as if sometimes if we add on to ourselves or if we change who we are, then those around us who liked who we were before won't like us again. And, you know, with anything in regards to change, I feel like change really does happen on such a minute level that it's very hard to hard to tell um, to the point where you wouldn't like somebody or to the point where you feel like you couldn't be accepted. And I feel like any acceptance of yourself or any acceptance you know, in an external sense has to happen at first by you. You know, I think we have to understand and accept ourselves before we expect to be accepted by anyone else. Because I feel like it's the comfort that you have with yourself and the silent confidence that you have in your expression that allows others or somewhat forces others to to accept you for who you are. And what I'm saying is you don't need to be accepted by everyone. You know, it doesn't have to make sense to everyone. It just has to make sense to you. A lot of our aspirations, goals, dreams, hopes, mentalities and and intentions aren't necessarily read by other people you know they're really just read by us and that's why i feel like if anything we should be present with ourselves and understand that our cage isn't isn't other people it's our relationship to it it's how we feel like what we do is dependent on another person or another situation or how we feel this action is going to do this and of course be mindful of the consequences of your actions but also realize when things aren't inherent to you also realize when things aren't necessarily a descriptor for who you are and a, and a tell of your character. It's important to realize how much of yourself is within each of your actions and how much of yourself is going to be dictated by that which is not you. And I feel like, of course, there are certain things that seep out and we're, you know, as much as we want them to not paint our character, they do. And I think it's just important when those things happen to sort of tell yourself that it's not, you know, affirm to yourself that who you are is not dependent on some situation, some action or, or something else. I feel like that type of affirmation, that type of self-validation is sort of integral to, to your change. It's about you enforcing whatever ideal you want for yourself. If you want any freedom within, you have to be the one to unlock your cage. You have to be the one to open yourself up and open up, I guess, not necessarily your programming, but your understanding. Because what I feel like is uh, the most important part of that is, you know, self-realization, realizing that whatever you do is going to tend towards who you are. It's going to tend towards what you want as long as you have some type of intention to do so. And I think if you have any intention to grow or any intention to sort of move forward, all you have to do is be present enough to see your next steps. And that's what I feel like the, I guess the key to to moving forward is because you don't necessarily have to have every single thing planned out. And I feel like that's a cage in and of itself. You know, a relative realization of a, of a goal isn't necessarily saying that you have to be at that goal as soon as you take your first step, or you have to know every single step towards that goal. You just have to understand how to take the next one. And then after that, the next one and the next one and the next one. And you know, sometimes you get, I guess, in a, a good mentality or a, in a good place to see a bunch of steps ahead but 
I think the most important thing that we can do for ourselves is be ourselves. You know, and stop it. Not necessarily attempting to be other people, but stop trying to be a version of ourselves we think is accepted by other people. Because any acceptance from other people has to happen at first by you. Because I realize if you try to go out in the world and, and I guess, exist within a certain definition, you'll see parts of yourself seep out into the world and you'll call those parts of yourself negative. You'll call those parts of yourself, oh, that wasn't me, or oh, I got out of body, or oh, I got out of pocket, blah, blah, this is that and the other. And I think the reason why these things feel so much out of our control is because we don't acknowledge them. You know, we don't give them any energy or we don't give them any attention. And in that way, we give them a lot of energy. And I know it seems sort of counterintuitive, but I feel like the very uh, need to feel like we have to hide a part of ourselves is sort of enforcing the idea that if we don't hide it, it's going to show. And I think that's why it seeps out. And that's why it, it sort of has that relationship to us. Because what we contain within us is really what cages us. It's about the expression and the understanding, the creativity, the love, the whatever feeling you have you caged up inside of you that stops you from expressing yourself in a contrasting way. You know, I feel like if you don't allow yourself to experience the 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 ugly, sometimes you can't experience the beauty. And that's not to say you have to live in negativity, but acknowledgement is important. It's important to acknowledge when certain things could go straight it's important to acknowledge when you know you're not going the right way either i feel like overall it's just important to be present enough to see that which seeks out change present enough to see what's containing you and what you're containing within yourself and i feel like a lot of times you know your goals are contained within you you know a lot of times we keep our goals in our head when we want them in reality and i feel like the same thing works with pretty much everything we do i feel like it's about realizing that you know this is your life to live in, in a lot of ways and you're the only one that can use the space that you take up so it's important to sort of break down your barriers so you can experience that break down your cage so you can be free and if you're not free in the external sense it's important to be free in the internal sense because i feel like a lot of things are just a matter of our perspective with them of course there are certain things that i have to do of course there's a certain uh, law, laws that to abide by of course i'm moral in that sense of course i'm going to do what i can but i feel like when it comes to our own expression our own realization of self and our own development as people i feel like overall the the subtle importance isn't in our external reaction but in our internal healing our internal understanding and how much you know we realize our actions are impacted by that which we hold within ourselves and i realize it's most of the time a lot a lot of what we do is is uh based off of who we are inside and that works with interaction that works with everything because a lot of the assumptions we make are sort of sort of constrained on how we want something to be one or how we don't want something to be a lot of times we don't accept things for how they are because we project how we want them to be or how we expect them to be in our head already and i realize expectation is sort of that stripper of freedom because if you expect something to be a certain way and then it's not that certain way, you take it personal almost. As if, you know, you've been done a disservice when in reality it's not in reference to you. And I think that's the important part. Realizing that not and everything is inherent to you. Just like I, I say, like, um, whenever we're talking about our negative negativity and embracing the fact that it's not a part of you. You have to realize that everything around you is not really a part of you. That the positivity as well. And I don't mean that in a in a negative way, but I mean that in a way to say that, you know, you have to realize that a lot of the world isn't necessarily based on you. And I don't mean that to put anybody down, but I mean that to say like you have to be based on you. Not the world. You know, you have to be the one to live out your own experience and, and discover what's out here for you. I feel like a lot of life is just experiencing and embracing the unknown, realizing that there's so much out here, there's so much potential, there's so much opportunity. And if you're not present enough to see it, you'll never see it. And that's why I feel like the present moment is sort of the most important thing, because it's the only moment where you can truly capitalize off of who you are and capitalize off of any opportunity, luck, preparation, whatever you're doing. You know, if you come at anything with a calm, confidence and presence, I feel like you can achieve the wonders of the world. As long as you have the intention to do so, as long as you're willing to, to put in, I guess, whatever work is characteristic of whatever goal that you want. 
And I, um, I was talking about it yesterday, but I think it's important to also work in your own favor. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, God works in my favor or the universe works in my favor or this, this, that, and the other. But I feel like part of that and part of that experience and part of gratitude for whatever you believe in is putting in the work to work in your own favor as well. You know, being a agent for your own change and being an agent for your own success as well as whatever you're grateful for. And I feel like that gratitude for the self and that understanding of whatever it is you need to get into is what allows us to be people. What allows us to grow beyond our, I guess, our relative limits and relative understanding for who we are. And um, I think all of that is to say that our cage is not what contains us, but what we contain within ourselves. I feel like you should, I guess, give yourself the freedom to experience all the parts of yourselves that you keep locked up so you can let them go. So you can continue to move forward, whatever it is that you want. Um, so uh, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I really do appreciate y'all. I appreciate everything we got going. Um, a lot on the way. A lot on the way. I'm waiting on some some things for the, for this area so I can get a proper uh, podcast set up. Uh, all in all, thank you. I appreciate you. Make sure you guys are taking care of yourself and, and being true and honest. Uh, other than that, 